Hello, hello, hello. Joshua here. We're about to do a Canelo versus Plant pre-show. We have a major pay-per-view about to get up here today. Canelo Alvarez versus Caleb Plant. That's what the discussion is going to be on, as well as some other things tied to that particular pay-per-view and overall card. Going to be joining in with Slavin. What up, BTN Benjamin? Yeah, yeah, how we do. But all is good. Been a minute. Been a minute since I've been on here. Slavin as well. See, I'm repping that Team T, baby. Shout out to Tierra Brown. Got that W in Mexico. This just happened this past weekend. No shout out there, without a doubt. What up with it? Lonnie Harris, aka Hands. <laughs> What's good, man? All is good. Just holding it down here about to talk some boxing. Some boxing having. Hey, what's up? <laughs> what's going on, Slavin? Hey, nothing. Just trying to adjust this. <laughs> nothing much, really. Yeah, it's been a minute. Been a minute. Yeah. You're, you're harder to get to than the president. <laughs> yeah. Well. I hope it's all right. I'm not entirely visible, but <laughs> all good, all good. We'll make it work. We'll make it yeah. work. The chair is a little too high, so <laughs> that, that <laughs> table is too old. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that is funny. All right. So this is gonna be that '86 boxing boxing haven collaboration once again. That's mm -hmm. right. We're going to hmm. talk about the Canelo versus Plant pay-per-view. As a matter of fact, we can probably talk about some of the other fights on the card. Well, there are yeah. some that are somewhat decent. Uh, I don't know if it, I wouldn't say it's the worst card, but it's uh, just a solid, it's straight. I would say it's straight. You know, we have yeah. a few, a few known commodities on the undercard to include the likes of uh, Rancis Barthelemy. Mm -hmm. Anthony Durrell is going to be fighting. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. A good one might end up being Ray Vargas versus Leonard Baez. I think that could be, end up being a pretty action-packed fight uh, outside mm -hmm. of the main event. And then the Elvis Rodriguez versus Juan Pablo Romero. I don't know that I know Romero. I would have to see him. Uh, but that should be an interesting one. I am familiar with Elvis Rodriguez because he was with Top Rank and he did a lot of fighting during the pandemic in that Top Rank bubble in Las Vegas. So he ended up losing. I believe it was his last fight that he may have lost. And uh, now he's bouncing back. Yep, he lost to Kenneth Sims Jr. So Elvis Rodriguez is going to be on there. And that kind of rounds up the overall card. But, of course, the marquee fight of the entire thing is Caleb Plant versus Canelo Alvarez. And this is going to be a fight in which – all four belts are on the line, the four major belts at least. We're talking yeah. the WBO, WBA, WBC, and the IBF uh, super middleweight titles, and as well as the ring title. And essentially, you will be known as the lineal champion, I suppose, as yeah. well, with the win. <laughs> so Canelo has a chance to be the first undisputed Mexican champion and I think his chances are pretty high in that coming to fruition but that aside just let me know your thoughts on the overall fight 
Yeah, that's right. Now when I think about it, yeah, Julio Cesar Chavez never held all those titles nor Oscar. Oh, well, but he's not from Mexico anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I think, well, you know, I think it is going to be a good fight. I mean, uh, depends on how, you know, plant fights, of course, if uh, <laughs> how long it's going to last and all that. How good of a fight it will be! But I trust he will. He will put up a good fight, and he's rather, he's a rather clever boxer, I guess. Uh, he's not some, you know, some type like uh, Yildirim or those guys. are are rocky feeling, yeah. and we, <laughs> so no, I no. trust that he will not get destroyed like in three rounds anyway. <laughs> so you know, he's a. Uh, He's a rather serious opponent, yeah, but I just uh, don't know of his chances, you know, how big they are of winning, that they are, I wouldn't say they are that big, anyway. but there is always a, a chance, it's boxing, you know, so <laughs> that's what they say, yeah, when it comes to Canelo, of course, he's the heavy favorite, you know, yeah. as usual, and, uh, even though he's fighting a much taller, bigger guy, but he's done that before, you know, so we've seen that he can dismantle guys that are much taller and and, and uh, naturally heavier and all that. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, Canelo's, yeah, at this stage, he's done a great job of being able to adapt and overcome the height advantages that uh, may be that may come about whenever he faces anyone. Rocky Fielding, of course, Billy yeah. Joe's a little bit taller than him. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, Caleb Smith. Uh, and yeah, they're the biggest. To name biggest. others. Yeah, yeah, Smith being a big one, really a uh, uh, 175-er now. Uh, but, yeah, I think that you make some good points. Canelo, or Clint, rather, is a very skilled fighter. I think that he's shown that over the years, and he's really, his name, he's made a name for himself just as being uh, an athletic, talented fighter under that TMT stable, or at least fighting out of that gym. Uh, and he's shown that he has the capability of outboxing opponents. Mm. But when it comes to Canelo Alvarez, of course, that is a premier level a guy I regard as the number one fighter out there in the world, and Canelo is really on top of his game right now. I don't yeah. think that Plant has, well, it's not a matter of even thinking. I know that Plant hasn't faced anyone, at least in, in real competition, uh, on the level of Canelo. And the same can't be said of Canelo. I know that Canelo has faced some top tier, top caliber guys throughout the years. So we can't necessarily say this is the best opponent Canelo has faced, but we know that this is the best opponent that Clint has faced. And yeah. it'll be a matter of how he withstands Canelo's shots. And the real fight I kind of use as the parameter, even though very different styles, I know that Clint had a tough fight, tough but clear win with uh, Jose Uzcategui, Uzcategui. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I just felt in that fight, Uzcategui, <laughs> he's uh, very one-dimensional in some sense. He, he's the only offense for it, doesn't have much yeah. defense. And he's, he's just, a little bit straight up and down at times. And he yeah, was able to really bust guy. up Clint. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he's another big guy. He was able to bust up Clint. And he was really able to, or at least Flint had a lot of redness in his face, and he may have had yeah. some cuts and all, but Flint, it took everything, I believe, for Flint to maintain that level of boxing that he did throughout the night. And this may ultimately be a different question when it comes to the pressure that Canelo applies. Yeah, that's what worries me, I was going to say, because I, I would really, really like to see Plant win, you know, just because I think mm -hmm. Canelo has been getting a little too cocky, you know, late in <laughs> all those victories. But uh, I also watched uh, Plant versus Caleb Truex. And yes. uh, even though Truex is a better uh, technical fighter than uh, Uskar Tegui, he, he, I mean, he, Plant did take some big, sh big shots there also. I mean, he was 
not that hard to hit, but he did win, of course, clearly. He was uh, yeah. also impressive, but what kind of worries me that he his defense might not be might not be up to par, you know, against Canelo, especially you know, yeah. the guy who is so good at you know finding his target, <laughs> you know that. Yeah, yeah and you know uh, that is a good point, and of course, Truax isn't really an elite level fighter of course he's on he's had some fights on that stage you know yeah. the elite level stage but we wouldn't yeah. consider him to be an elite level fighter he's I more so a b you can fighter. say he was close to that before when he yeah. was prime yeah 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 i mean he was able to pick up an alphabet title which is uh we commend him on that and everything but mm -hmm. True ops, you know, it wouldn't even be conceivable that he would be in with uh, Canelo and stand a chance of yeah. going the distance at all. So that yeah. doesn't bode too well for Plant. But that being said, there are a lot of people out there who think Plant, who think that uh, Plant may have the tools to outbox Canelo, who we've seen in trouble for, say, rounds when he's going up against those who are very skilled athletic boxers yeah. but yeah we don't know that that necessarily will translate to the case here and i guess a good example would be depending on how people view billy joe saunders by comparison to caleb clint because billy joe saunders had a couple of rounds where his boxing seemed to in his craftiness seemed to do pretty well against canelo before he was ultimately broken down yeah definitely I think actually I had that fight even at the point of stoppage. I think they both won like four rounds or something. I don't yeah. know. Uh, Saunders seemed to do very well, but of course he, in the end, he suffered. Uh, what was that kind? Of, he was hit somewhere. I don't know. Oh yeah, <laughs> the so orbital was, bone. Yeah, it was an an injury that put an end to that fight. It wasn't a real knockout, right? So yes, yes. Yeah, so if he had been able to continue fighting, I think yeah, that would really be kind of very close, tough fight for Canelo because Saunders is so tricky, you know, he's so good at uh, his defense is pretty good also, I would say. And uh, yeah, he's just a very clever fighter. He's not a really, you know, of course, he's not a puncher, but yeah, he's got yeah. skills, yeah. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, now, what do you think? How do you think Saunders and Plant compare? Well, I think Plant hits harder, definitely. Okay. Especially, I think he's a pretty good body puncher. You know? So that's what he should actually focus perhaps on against Canelo because you know yeah. how those punches can come very, I mean, <laughs> can be quite devastating if they are yeah, executed right and yeah maybe canelo can be caught off guard who knows by but yeah punch. yeah yeah i noticed and maybe it's because of canelo's shots and the firepower coming back that a lot of his opponents uh at least as of late have been reluctant to get off their offense i guess because of what is coming back to them but you're right. Yeah. I haven't seen anyone really center in and, and really go for Canelo, really working the body, really bringing the offense to him because a lot of times his last several opponents seem to more so shell up. I would say that um, Kovalev had a couple of moments where he was uh, trying to get off his offense and coming for him, but even him in, in the end, he, he essentially started to just shell up and be reluctant to throw. Yeah, definitely. I actually haven't yet seen, I mean, I've seen that knockout only, but I haven't seen yet that fight with Cole. But I, I didn't want to watch it really because yeah. he was, I knew he was going to lose more or less anyway, but because he was already, you know, damaged goods. But he did pretty well, surprisingly yeah. well, I heard, you know, <laughs> so that was pretty weird. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he did. He did pretty decently, you know, and this was him rebounding and, and uh, some people think he was fully shot. I don't know that he was fully shot. He rebounded from that loss to Elidir Alvarez and this yeah. was the fight immediately after that. 
And I have to admit that Kovalev looked good in that second fight with uh, Alvarez. Mm. And some of it, I guess, could have been focused in terms of when things haven't gone well for Kovalev and training was a big issue, I guess they were talking about. And he's successful to the body, but he had some moments against Canelo. But um, ultimately, yeah, I just think Canelo right now, he is, if you look at him just, He's really grown into 168 pounds, so yeah. therefore I don't think he's going back down. So all the talk of 160, I think, is out of the window because it probably wouldn't yeah. make any sense for him to go back down from 160. Now, when yeah. they, yeah, I've heard discussion. that would be pretty, yeah, pretty damaging, I think, for him. Yeah, too. that would have to struggle to make the weight, you know, sweat off too much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would yeah that would be uh, probably uh, damaging for him at this stage. Now, I would like to, you know, we've had discussions in the past, and of course, not to look past Caleb Plant because Plant is very much a live dog in this fight. Yeah. Um, of who we could see Canelo in there with next, and of course, one of the names that is routinely been thrown out there is David Benavidez and yeah. I don't really know how close we are to that uh, it seems that we may be a little bit further away from that actually happening than one would would think unless Canelo him himself demanded that hey I want David Benavidez next I know Benavidez was lined up to fight uh, I can't remember who the opponent was here not too long from now but the person pulled out, I believe it was the injury, so I don't know if he's still fighting or whatnot. But that was a name as far as someone who theoretically, on paper at least, would come at Canelo and pressure him with the type of offense that he hasn't faced in a long period of time. Yeah, I think Benavides would maybe be the toughest opponent uh, right now for Canelo because of both uh, his uh, height and reach and uh, the way he just fights you know throws a lot of punches and uh, yeah he's just uh he would definitely not shrink you know from that that challenge you know, definitely i like so many as you said guys like feeling and uh yeah i'm not gonna callum smith also i guess partly that yeah would be a whole 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 different scenario i think and uh, Canelo will really have to uh, you know, dig, dig, dig deep and really like fight his best fight to win. win. I, I think so, really. But uh, of course, Benavidez has had some tough fights as well before. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's mostly been impressive, you know. Even in those tough fights, he's been, you know, rather impressive. And uh, yeah, he's a puncher. I, I don't know if uh, he's. Uh, <laughs> A one punch knockout guy, or he has no, to can't believe that. Yeah, he that's why he throws a lot of punches. I guess he, mm -hmm. he's more of that ac accumulative kind of puncher. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think with him, it would certainly be a battle of attrition. Uh, and taking that into account, I don't know that he would necessarily outlast. Canelo, of course, uh, if the fight happens, we would be able to tell, but Canelo was built for the long haul as well. So it would make for a very interesting fight for as long as it lasts. And if we see an offensive Benavidez in in the way that we know he's capable of, uh, it could be one of those sort of classic type fights. But that being said, I must say that Benavidez has gotten off to a bit of a slow start in his last several fights uh, when you look at it in totality. And I think part of that could be sort of the time in between. He seems like a fighter, excuse me, who thrives off of being active and fighting more. So we'll see yeah. what he looks like. I think we do need to see him in there once again. And if this fight that is that was previously scheduled is going to happen, that'll give us a good idea of kind of where he's at relative to his last fight and how he's looking as far as coming in in shape because I believe he was uh, overweight in his last fight, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, he's a big guy, you know, for yeah. 168 pounders, definitely. Yeah, he's been growing. I mean, he's still young, so 
His body yeah. hasn't uh, yet, you know, fully, I mean, how you say it, fully developed, so, yeah. Yeah, so he I may... Trust, yeah, he will be going up to 175, eventually. Yeah, and I could be wrong on that. He fought Ronald Ellis, so yeah. I was trying to think. I know Jojo Diaz was overweight in his last fight. Maybe I'm thinking of that, but... Oh, wow. um, I'm going to see, was he overweight? But I know that, yeah, he, he definitely is going to eventually be going up to 175. So he may not have been. Uh, I digress on that. Um, I, I'll have to look into that. I don't know for sure. But it looks like um, I'm looking it up here now. So November 13th, it looks like he did get a replacement opponent. Uh, and it's going to be a Kyron Davis, who's a last-minute oh, replacement yeah. coming in. 16 2 and 1 6 ko so that tells me he's probably not going to have the type of pop to really do much with Benavidez but that being said uh, we'll see how his boxing skills are I don't know that I've seen him for sure he's out of Delaware and that's going to be his opponent November 13th Benavidez versus Davis mm, yeah I see it now also yeah, well, I hope he won't be fighting too too many of uh, lower level opponents because he needs a bigger fight soon. Soon enough. Yeah, yeah. The Ronald Ellis fight was a good fight and good win for him. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it'll be interesting. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. So we'll see how he looks because he fought once in 2020 and then he fought in march so he's, he's gotten in two fights he will have gotten in two fights here in 2021 so i guess that's good momentum uh yeah. leading into next year and we'll see if he's a part of that canelo sweepstakes mm. you know who else i would like to see against canelo you know he's not right now at 160 of course it's uh demetrius andrade you know oh yeah <laughs> I think yeah. he would really, you know, I guess have a realistic shot, you know, I guess Canelo, definitely. I agree. I uh, was actually watching a few Andre fights uh, on my flight back from uh, Mexico City here uh, recently. Yeah. And uh, I was just looking at the Walter Cotton Dakwa fight as well as a couple of other ones he had. Um, to include the highlights of the Liam Williams fight, you know, I think, yeah, 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 yeah I think Andre a, is a, yeah, he is very much someone that I like. Some people um, aren't really fond of his style or him in general, but yeah. I do think he's a top level boxer, one of the elites in the game, and I think stylistically he would give Canelo some problems, and it will make for an interesting contest. I, I would say that is closer to the type of matchup as far as Canelo versus Lara, where Canelo had a lot of problems. I think yeah. it's close to that. Uh, and I think that it would make for a very interesting fight, especially with Canelo being here in his prime and looking exceptional at 168 pounds. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and also some things that have been thrown out there recently, of course, is the potential of Canelo fighting Triple G in that trilogy fight. Now, oh, Triple no. G, <laughs> if you saw, and I'm sure you're aware, but Triple G, of course, has agreed to fight uh, Ryota Murata in oh, yeah. on December 30th, I believe, December 31st, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, this yeah, is uh, Mur like, they, yeah, they Murata got has a title. Japan when they fight on, on New Year's Eve, yeah. Yeah. So I think Murata has like a like the WBA title, if I'm not mistaken, or something of that nature, um, or one of those yeah. uh, belts. Yeah. yeah, and of course, this was talked about at the very beginning of 2021, and it was a question of whether G Triple G was going to wait the entire year um, because he had fought Sears Meta, uh, I believe that's his name, and... Um, Triple G, this was talked about way back then, and it looks like that ended up being uh, what it what it ended up uh, what it turned out to be in terms of him just oh. waiting the entire year. Because let me see when this Sarah's Meta fight was. Oh yeah, yeah it was that this, guy, yeah, that's right, the Polish guy. Sarah Sarah Meta, yeah, it, that was actually December of 2020. So yeah. he will have gone a year 
actually more than a year because this was December 18th and he will have gone a year in between that fight now that's interesting but maybe it's something that triple g wanted he is now 39 right. yeah. Well, yeah 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 so well, 40 like april or something yeah i think <laughs> i i just think i don't know for first thing i think murata will you know i expect him actually to win that fight because Oh yeah, you know that the Ravchenko fight he really exposed him at not not being you know being past his prime definitely yeah. so yeah, and so that you, fight was like 2019 or something right yeah yeah it was October of 2019 so yeah, uh, yeah it's, it will be, have been uh, pretty long delays in between these yeah. last three fights for. Uh, uh, Triple G. So you favor Murata? Yeah, yeah, I do. You know, he's a very, he's a good puncher. Actually, he's a yeah. very good fighter. You know, offensively. Yeah. So and he's a, uh, he's still rather. You know, he's still in his prime. I would say, and uh, yeah, that's a major difference. Uh, a rather, I mean, not rather, a very dangerous opponent for Triple G at this point. You know, and. Uh, I guess at any point he would be still a rather dangerous, uh, not a safe opponent, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. and Triple G should not really chase a third fight with Canelo. I don't think he can ever come close to winning that fight. Uh, yeah. At, at so this why, stage. Why do it? <laughs> yeah, and even I know in some of the discussions, I was looking at some of the uh, sort of commentary on that potential fight and Canelo apparently has stated that he will only face him at 168 pounds so Triple G would have to come up in order to get that fight uh anyway so yeah it may not make sense but um speaking on that Triple G Murata fight I guess I can uh kind of see where you're going there uh Murata is very offensive he's tough he's got a chin as well and uh it should be interesting I think yeah. that It'll really be telling in some sense because Murata can be there to be hit, and we'll see how Triple G's power looks here at 39. Because yeah, um, Sarah's meta. I think uh, a lot of us felt that he was going to get the win there, and he was going to stop him. Um, but you know, I, I guess Derevian Shinko is that sort of best parameter, and he, yeah. he did take Triple G life and death, and it'll be interesting to see how uh, Murata and him hold up together. Yeah, I don't think Sharameta Sh was a puncher really ever. No, no. Many knockouts. So it's like, I believe he was like 18 and old with, I don't know, six seven eight knockouts something like that. yeah so yeah he was 21 and oh actually and oh, had yeah. uh five ko so yeah he wasn't oh, yeah, really much of a fighter right. right oh yeah <laughs> Paul yeah mangia Mung fought him in his last fight yeah that's yeah. good so yeah, oh, yeah. he's gone back to back losses because I, I do recall that mangia hami uh giving him yeah. uh giving him problem and mangia stopped him in the sixth round Mugia, yeah, that's one of Triple my Triple G favorites. stopped them in the seventh. Yeah, Mug uh, wait, Mugia is fighting uh, someone also. There are some good fights really being made right now, coming up. Oh, yeah. I guess oh, yeah. He's fighting Rosado, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that is right. That's yeah. pretty, yeah, I, I would say a really good match, but still, Rosado is. Tough guy, you know. And, uh, hey, yeah, Rosada. Hey, yeah, Rosada is old oh, Gabe. He's shown that he still has the goods. You know, he's probably yeah. been probably been counted out a thousand times, but hey, he still keeps turning back up. And maybe that sort of performance against Danny Jacobs wasn't a fluke, you know. And he's looked good. Yeah, all right. And that fight in this last one against. Uh, Beck the bully, where he uh, stopped him with a huge punch that was on that. Knock out of the year uh, type uh, table or candidacy. And uh, I think Rosada will be a very good test for Mangia, who is now, of course, mm. training under Eric Terri El Terrible Morales, something we've spoken of. 
And I have seen some slight differences in his game. So this is a very interesting one. And if he gets past Rosada, who is really sort of a, a, a fighter you can take on to see if you're ready for that absolute next level, then it may be a major fight in store for Mungia after that. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. You know, he it will be about time. So at at one sixty, uh, yeah, I think he's got a lot of lot of talent. I mean, a lot of uh, talent and uh, tools and all that physical tools. And uh, yeah, it's very simply very exciting. Uh, young fighter. He's still like twenty three, twenty four, right? Something like that. Yeah, and he's golden boy, if I'm not mistaken. So it'll be interesting. I wonder if we could uh, end up seeing him against the likes. It would have to be cross promotional, of course, but the likes of say um, Jamal Charlo, who is sort of sitting and waiting and has thrown his yeah. name out there, saying so Charlo has said that he wants the winner of this Canelo Plant fight, oh, but. Yeah. Um, you know, whether that's uh, realistically going to happen or not is another thing. But Charlo Munguia, I think, would be uh, certainly a good one, if if not yeah. Charlo versus Andre. Yeah, that too. I'm just not sure why they aren't making those fights yet, but I hope they will soon. Uh, Charlo, of course, has not really been having has yeah. fought a really good fighter for some time now, I guess. You know, it's been mostly like these B minus B plus maybe guys. Best. Yeah, his yeah. best win is the Revy and Shinko, and yeah. outside of that, his uh time at one sixty has been rather uh, lackluster. Yeah. Um, and then a Korobov fight where Corbal. some thought that uh he really uh didn't look too good, and mm. particularly Korobov could have uh won that fight as well. Yeah, it's been yeah. sort of a lackluster thing for him, and he's done a lot of talking and calling out people, but doesn't seem to be getting anything made. And I know that Eddie Hearn has been trying to get him in the ring with Andre, and it doesn't seem like money is the issue, so I don't know what it is. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's weird. Yeah, yeah. It's, it seems like some fighters just don't want to... <laughs> They have a list of uh, fighters they want to avoid, I guess, I don't know. It's just yeah. it's, it's like that. <laughs> All right, 86 Boxing, Boxing Haven. This is the Canelo Plant pre-show. I will just say, uh, Slavin as well, that um, I was able to catch that Michaela Mayer versus Hamadouche, I forget her first name, uh, yeah. card last night. It turned out to be a pretty decent card. Uh, outside of the co-main event, which I thought was um, which I thought was all right, um, not very offensive for my liking, but it turned out to be a fight of the year between Mayer and Amadou. So I'm gonna say definitely watch that fight. It has so much replay value. They were banging all throughout the entirety of the ten rounds, and it turned out to be a very good fight. Fight of the year candidate. Yeah, so it's been a rather good. Uh... These last two weeks have been good for female boxing. First, we had Cameron yeah. versus McGee, which was really, oh, yeah. a really, really good, thrilling fight. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. think yeah, Michaela Mayer looks like she got a lot of potential, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, and I questioned uh, whether uh, she had this type of fight in her, and that's wrong on my part because she very much does, and she even looked good in the aftermath as far as conditioning, so she was built for this type of fight, and I think that at this point, yeah, she would be, uh, she's a major player, she's a major player there at 130, and she actually is going to be in line to, at some point, Terry Harper, uh, who's under the uh, matchroom banner, and I think that could end up being a pretty good fight. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, women boxing is certainly, yeah, I mean, how do you say, <laughs> better now than it did. You know, I feel recently it was mostly about uh, Cecilia Marcus, you know, uh, yeah. uh, Katie Taylor, Clarissa Schiff, now it's 
to my other names as well. Yeah. You know. My daughter's going crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm all barking out there. <laughs> she's, uh, I guess she wants to go out. But oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I think that uh, uh, there are a lot of players out there at one. Things breaking up here. Thing. Oh, one sec. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I was yeah. saying, I was saying, Clarissa, she's doing her MMA thing, but uh, yeah, in reality, not so, uh, <laughs> not so successfully, you know? I guess, <laughs> right now. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think that there's uh, there are some good fights out there, or there's just one big fight for her, and that's Savannah Marshall. That's the fight I want to see, and I think Savannah, you know, I think it's uh, closer to fifty fifty than some may think. And I think Savannah Marshall's style would pose problems for Clarissa Shield, just given the fact yeah, that right. she's long and she can punch from distance as well. So yeah, that is a, what I consider to be a, a, a major story. fight at 160 pounds if Clarissa wants to do it on the boxing side. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the tall one, right, Savannah Marshall? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I don't know what's the deal. It seems that uh, Eddie Hearn is for it, so it's just a matter of her. Uh, mm. I don't know. She has to see what she she wants to do. You know. I was very impressed with Chantel Cameron. Really, I can say that because I watched that fight. Oh yeah. Very very uh, fast. All that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that is going to end up being uh, a part of the sort of, I guess it's like a mini tournament. So she's going to end up taking on the winner of um, Kelly Reese versus Jessica Mar Jessica Kamara, and mm. they're eventually going to unify the belts. So mm. that fight should be coming up at some point, and I think it's going to be a good one. Jessica Kamara is out of uh, Canada. Kelly Reese, U.S., she's a native. She has Native roots, uh, Native American roots. Uh, both of them are very good fighters. Kamara has a lone loss, and I can't exactly recall who it is, but it's it's like a top level fighter. And Reese is undefeated, if I'm not mistaken. But it should make for a very interesting matchup uh, between the two of them. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then they'll eventually the winner of that will eventually face Chantel Cameron. So. It's gonna be yeah. I think it's, it is. We're in a good place as far as women box, women's boxing, and it continues to expand. Yeah. And it goes to shows that hey, when that competition is there, then hey, it makes for good fights, and people will tune yeah. in. Definitely. I mean, I did watch like uh, a lot of Cecilia Bracus fights, and I remember there was simply not that much good competition in in her time, yeah. in, her, in her best time. <laughs> So it was, you know, not that exciting to watch. So. Yeah, and, and not only that, and she also was not uh, much of a puncher and for that in activity offensively either. You know, how some people who aren't punchers are more active and, and throw a yeah. lot of shots. So she was sort of more of a boxer and just, you know, in the fundamental sense, and that didn't always make for exciting fights, and I know she didn't have many stoppages. Yeah, she was like 36-2 uh, with maybe seven knockouts, I don't know, something like <laughs> yeah. Seven or eight knockouts, yeah. Yeah, interesting, interesting indeed. So, but yeah, that's some, uh, but yeah, some good stuff in tow, though. Um, but yeah, uh, this was the Canelo pre-show, Canelo plant. You know, we're going to see what happens here tonight. Um, so uh, I guess our final thing is, uh, what is your prediction for the Canelo plant fight? Uh, I don't know, really. I'm kind of leaning towards maybe even a late stoppage for Canelo or a, or a, a points victory, most likely, you know. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I'm going on the record. I say Canelo gets him out of there by the middle of the sixth round. We'll see if it happens, but that's well, what I'm going <laughs> with right there. I think 10th or 11th more likely, but uh, 
yeah, I can see it happening a little soon also, yeah. All right, yeah. that makes sense then. So yeah, we'll we'll see what goes down. Uh, but yeah, hey, you know, this has uh, been a great one. Slavin had to yeah. to this Airedale who is uh, on her on her bag right now, as I say, or mm-hmm. others say. Um, but we'll do this again tomorrow, right? Yeah. We'll make sure. this a more expanded <laughs> thing where we're going to talk about not only what happens with Canelo Plant, but some of the other action that has taken place over the last few weeks while we've been off air in a sense. So yeah. appreciate yeah. you taking the time. Slavin from Boston oh, yeah. Haven. I've been really missing this. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. We will keep it up. We will keep it up for sure. So yeah, until then, hey, I'll check you out, my man. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a good one.